Hey, what are you at guys? My name is Troy. Welcome to Facility D20. This is going to be an exciting video because we're getting into Pit Fighter. Now, why is Pit Fighter, you ask? Well, it's a pretty cool game where two champions get thrown in an arena and they fight to the death. It's basically super easy to play and works like rock, paper, scissors on steroids. So in this video, I decided to go ahead and paint the uh, ice arena. So I'm going to take you on in, show you guys how I printed it and painted it. Let's get into it. It's going to be fun. Threw this in Cura and sliced it up at the 0.15 millimeter scale quality with 10% infill and it took about 17 hours and cost a little less than 350. I used supports on the build plate here but I really didn't need it because it would have printed up just fine as you can see here by this time lapse. This would be a great area terrain piece for Age of Sigmar, 40k, D&D or even more machine and hordes. And once it was done I do my good old flamethrower trick. And here, just is to get any stranding or like um, fine, fuzzy pieces of plastic off these miniatures. Then I mix it up some Mod Podge and primer. And I do about 40% Mod Podge and 60% paint. And I put on a nice, heavy, thick base coat. And this is to make sure that I um, kind of fill in any of the cracks or gaps or um, the layer lines from the print. So once I painted all these up, I got back to work and I sliced up the ice sections along with the tentacles. Now this time I did use supports and it took about 12 hours, 13 hours, it cost about 250. As you can see here though, um, I only needed to use the supports because of the tentacles. Those gaps in the ice pans for the clips would print up just fine without it. So this was a pretty cool print and would be pretty cool if you take a second and smash that subscribe button too. It means the world to our small YouTube channels. And then he's got the same treatment, the same mixture. A nice good, you can see how heavy that coat is. A nice good heavy coat here. I made sure to get the, the sides as well. I tried not to get any paint into the clip so because I didn't want it too tight. Then it was time for a little ghostly blue and some airbrush thinner and I laid down a coat of ice blue and I pretty much shot this from the top down and this is to give some contrasting colors when I paint the white. So this was a bit of a slow process that I had to put on multiple thin coats. And I also painted the ice pans up. I didn't bother painting the water sections up because I figured I was going to paint them over in dark blue anyway. And then it was all done. It was time to kind of assemble a bit. And this is where it started to take shape. I can picture some pretty epic fights on this ice arena. Then it was time to mix up some white acrylic ink and some Windex to thin it down and then to hit the ice pans. Now I tried to stick to the edges and let some of that blue and gray bleed through a bit. Once the ice pans were done, I decided to paint up the snowy bits on the rim. Same thing, just kind of letting some of that blue and gray bleed through. Give it some contrast to the ice. On the flat parts, I went a little heavy with the white. So I had to take a break there for a second because I want to tell you about this FW Acrylic Ink. If you're having trouble airbrushing white, man, just save yourself some time. Go pick up some white acrylic ink. It's so much easier. Just mix it with a bit of Windex or airbrush thinner and like, thank me later. So then it was a Army Painter Deep Blue and a matte black and about a 60-40 again mixture of blue to black and I want it to go for a real deep dark blue. So I put on a nice heavy heavy base coat using an old brush. I like to use an old brush on 3D printed uh, FDM because FDM is kind of rough on the brush. 
just was careful to cut in cleanly around the edges of the ice pan and made sure I hit the sides too staying away from those clips left those clips the holes for the clips clean of paint then it was Vallejo magic blue and I gave the ice crystals a base coat of a dark Vallejo magic blue I started at the edges uh, and then worked my way towards the center. And this made for a real vibrant blue, but I'm planning on dolling this down with the airbrush uh, in the next few steps here. So once I had the outside done, it was easy to do the inside. I could go a little quicker here. I didn't have to be as careful. So there's a very sharp contrast to the white. And then I went back to the ice pans while that was drying and I just used some deep blue without mixing it with the black and it hit all these ripples. Just to shoot in some blue, try to give this dark blue more contrast. And I probably gave these about two or three light coats. I just went from piece to piece to piece until it was all done. Then I threw in some magic blue Vallejo Magic Blue and just give them one quick coat again on top of the ripples. You can see here now I use some Vallejo Ice Blue. And I hit all the waves again. And then I took the same Ice Blue or even the Ghost Blue from before. And I just from the top down started to hit all these ice crystals. Just trying to give these ice crystals a nice like vibrant almost blue icy look once i had all that done i took some of the white again this white ink and just hit the very tips of the wave and then went back to the crystals and hit the very tops and tips of the crystals and this was to give that real frosted over look Pretty easy, pretty straightforward, but I was happy with the look and happy with how long it took me to paint this. This thing only took me like two nights to paint. You could easily do this in a day, um, probably about four hours in total. Then I had to print up some clips and it was time to assemble this thing. So first I thought about gluing this, but it came with these really cool clips and I think this is because it'll make it a lot easier to transport if you were going to transport it. So I decided afterwards that I wasn't going to glue it and I just assembled this thing with the clips. And these hold it pretty good. It would have been nice if it held it a little tighter, but it definitely held it tight enough to keep it in place. It's not going to fall apart on you. And once it's all together, it holds pretty well. You can flip it upside down, turn it around stuff. And here we go, here's the final shots of it. And you can see here, these are the tentacles that I made. So if you wanna see how I painted these, check out the Kraken video and you'll see the whole process from start to finish on a great big Kraken. So guys, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you around.